When you think of country music, who do you think of? Maybe it's Dolly Parton belting Jolene or Tim McGraw's iconic Southern drawl. Maybe it's something a little bit more modern like Taylor Swift's Love Story, which got a revival on TikTok this past summer. Or maybe Gabby Barrett's top Billboard country song, I Hope. Or maybe, let's be honest, you just think of white people. When you look at the country charts, black artists are far and few between. But that doesn't mean they don't exist. And actually, in many ways, black people in America have helped shape country music to what it is today, even if they don't always get the recognition for it. For many historians, the origins of modern day country music begin with bluegrass. Bluegrass relies on the acoustic sounds of string instruments, and the banjo is a staple. The banjo is a West African instrument brought over in the 1600s via the transatlantic slave trade. The instruments were originally made out of boards and had been popular in the region way before American slavery started. Other instruments like the fiddle and tambourine were also integral to bluegrass and also had links to Africa. Now, as enslaved Africans were forced into the Americas, they continued to make these instruments. But Black influence didn't stop there. Work calls and chants became lyrics to these sounds, and these chants, also known as spirituals, helped to tell stories, keep the pace, and secretly spread information. For example, the songs of the Underground Railroad had secret coded directions to help slaves escape to the North. Fast forward a few hundred years and take this lyrical storytelling element with this acoustic string sound and you got the foundation of country music. Now, while these spirituals were essential to a slave's motivation, survival, and possible freedom, how did this music enter into mainstream white Southern culture? The answer, blackface. By the 1800s, music created by black people became popular within mainstream white music, and minstrel shows helped bring these songs to the spotlight. Well, well, sort of. Well, let me explain. You see, minstrel shows were like OG American theater. They usually would consist of variety comedy shows. Think SNL, but like super racist. Since black performers weren't allowed in white spaces, white performers would paint their faces black, play the banjo, fiddle, and other bluegrass instruments, and perform satirical slave songs and dances. They would do skits and speeches in exaggerated black southern dialects. So essentially, they stripped African slaves of their tribal cultures, made it illegal for them to speak their native language, made reading English punishable by lashings or worse, and then created a theatrical art form to make fun of them for the music and dialects they were forced to create for themselves. Yep, that, that's about right. Minstrel shows helped solidify a lot of negative black stereotypes, and it was still seen in film all the way up to the mid 20th century. But despite the overall harm the satirical genre did for the black community, Black music was starting to be taken seriously by white people for the first time, and mainly because it was introduced to them in this non-threatening way. Unfortunately, there was no credit or representation given to the black artists that helped create the music. Another precursor to modern day country music and a lot of other genres was the blues, which got its start in the 1860s as minstrel shows were starting to come down from their peak. The sad, sultry minor tones within the slave spirituals made its way into the genre. These spirituals call and response based lyrics were a way to create more unity and inclusion within the music experience and that carried over into blues as well. Now there are tons and tons of black blues artists but many of them didn't get white mainstream acceptance until the following century and even then they weren't given the same performance privileges as their white counterparts. And this inequality was the same in many other genres that were developing during the 20th century, like jazz, rock, and yeah, country. There has been and continue to be black country artists. Country music is a blend of many different cultures and genres, but history doesn't always reflect this. 
things get a little messy once you learn that these iconic white artists actually got their trade from other black artists. Hank Williams was mentored by Rufus T. Tot Payne, Johnny Cash was taught from an early age by Gus Cannon, and black guitar player Leslie Riddle was known as one of the pioneers of the finger-picking guitar style, favored by Maybelle Carter. And while legal segregation has been outlawed in the United States since the 1960s, Americans still have trouble giving black artists credit within the country genre. Moving into the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, black country artists weren't charting and country music had been seen socially as a white genre. And internalized prejudice within music management didn't really help. In 1998, general manager of Curb Records, Dennis Hannon, insisted that, quote, for country music to be more well-rounded, we would like to see more African-American artists. But he also said, if it is harder for African-American artists to break into the industry, it's more of a lifestyle issue. Likewise, in 2006, Tammy Genovese of the Country Music Association rejected a reporter's suggestion that the industry had not attempted to gain black fans telling The Guardian, quote, the black community's lifestyle is different from what we communicate with country music. Black people have their own types of music that they listen to, be that jazz, hip hop, or whatever. Country singers in Nashville formed to create the Black Country Music Association in the mid 1990s in hopes of giving black artists an avenue into the genre. Country singer Cleve Francis was one of the founders and described the Nashville country music industry as one based solely on quote permission when it came to the black artists there. Francis himself had suffered from racism in the industry, especially at the hands of those who were supposed to be in charge of marketing and managing his career. Despite these attempts at inclusion, the genre today still faces hardships when it comes to representation. Atlanta rapper Lil Nas X shattered records with his debut hit, Old Town Road, in 2019. From the topic to the twangy tone, it was, as his producer described, a country rap song. I got the horses in the back, horse stock is attached, head is mad at black, got the boosters black and mad. And at first, Billboard agreed. He was ranked on the Billboard country charts before Billboard decided to retract his ranking and exclude him from the category. Billboard told Rolling Stone, quote, while Old Town Road incorporates references to country and cowboy imagery, it does not embrace enough elements of today's country music to chart in its current version. This was definitely not the first time a hip hop artist attempted to enter into country and was rejected. Nelly and Tim McGraw, both Southern artists, made over and over in 2004. it made not even a blip on the country charts. Beyonce's Daddy Lessons on Lemonade was a textbook country bop. The song's thematic storytelling and use of traditional country instrumentals fit well into the genre, which led her to performing the song at the 2016 CMAs. But country fans were pissed. According to the AP, Beyonce also tried to submit the record for a country Grammy, and the submission was rejected. But this sort of exclusion doesn't stop at hip hop or R&B artists attempting to enter into the country space. Mickey Guyton, a rising black female country artist, has commented both on the racism that faces black country artists and also the industry's sexism. If you think we live in the land of the free, you should try to be she said, quote, I don't even realize how crazy what I'm doing is. It really is hard for women to get played on country radio, period. Do I face extra obstacles? Absolutely. From the slave trade to Beyonce, black people have been shaping and contributing to country music since the start. And while the United States has made some progress in black representation in some genres of music and entertainment, it's important that history provides a holistic depiction of all of our contributions. Because black history is American history.